Hi guys. Um, I received your questions about my video. First of all, thanks for thanks for watching the video. I'm glad you guys enjoyed it. Um, and I got your questions here, and I'm going to read them off, and I'm going to answer them. I was going to sort of group them into similar questions with similar answers, but I'm not going to do that anymore. Um, I'm just going to uh, read them all and answer them all, and if I cover the same stuff twice, then, you know, so be it. What are you going to do? Uh, so, first question is from Kevin. Uh, the pronunciation of these names is probably not going to be great, but <laughs> give, my, give it my best shot. Kevin Higer Higera, <clears throat> how did Mr. Daglish convince you to talk about your story in this video? Well, when Mr. Daglish and I were young, we did some things that you could say we now regret, and Mr. Daglish has pictures. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Uh, he just asked me to do it because he thought it might be an interesting story for you guys, and, uh, you know, we talk about uh, politics a fair bit, and, uh, you know, he thought maybe my story might be interesting to you, so he just asked me. Um, why didn't more people try to oppose what was happening in Czechoslovakia? That was from Andrea Nino. Um, that, that's a complicated question, uh, a good one. Um, first of all, some people uh, believed that uh, a communist government was the right way to go. Um, lots of people uh, in positions of authority in the uh, Czech Republic or in Czechoslovakia um, believed that that was that was the correct system of government, and they and they supported it. Um, some people, uh, obviously, when you opposed the government in Czechoslovakia, they made your life very difficult. And the more you opposed them, the more difficult they made it. So, it was a very difficult um, decision between being active against the government and um, you know living a normal life, seeing your kids. Uh, having a good job, having a good place to live. Remember, the government was in control of all those things. So if you opposed them, uh, they could take those things away from you, put you in prison, uh, that type of thing. So um, lots of people, you know, couldn't do that because they needed to raise a family and, and you know, have a, have a normal life. I realize my hair is doing a funny thing here. Sorry. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> um, let's see. Uh, does your family still celebrate any Czech traditions? In what ways are you and your family still Czech? Uh, that was from David Herrera. Uh, yes, we do. We speak Czech um, as much as we can. My Czech is not amazing, but it's okay, <laughs> considering I grew up here. Uh, we celebrate... Um, there's a tradition in, in Czech Republic to not only celebrate your birthday, but to celebrate the day of the saint you're named after. So everybody knows, uh, everybody knows, I think St. Patrick's Day is the, what, the 17th? But every saint has their own day, and if you're named after that, then you celebrate on that day as well. Um, which is funny, considering uh, Czechs are very, uh, very atheist uh, people, but that... That's a tradition. And also, we have Christmas on the 24th, not on the 25th. So that, um, that uh, tradition works actually fairly well, because uh, uh, my wife obviously celebrates on the 25th, and we celebrate on the 24th, so we sort of split Christmas, which is sort of nice. Um, what do you think would have happened to your family if the Swiss man hadn't been so nice to you? Did his actions help you believe in the goodness of people? That was from... Miguel Rector. Um, what probably would have happened if he had insisted on on sending us back is very likely um, my parents would have gone to jail and I probably would have uh, ended up with my grandparents. And um, yeah, after after getting out, uh, our lives would have been much much more difficult. Uh, certainly, uh, for my father, getting a job would have been uh, very hard, and uh, yeah, it would have been it would have been very very difficult uh, if we had been if we had been sent back. Um, how did your family's lifestyle change once you were in Canada? How was it better or worse than it was in Czechoslovakia? And that was from Darko Blankovic. Um, 
I remember it as being just everything was bigger. Uh, there was, uh, I remember uh, one of the first times um, where we moved into a, uh, to our own to our own apartment in Canada. We were driving down the road, and I just remember looking around and realizing everything was thirty percent bigger in Canada than it was in. The streets were wider. The cars were bigger. The you know the just just everything seemed to seem to be seemed to be much bigger and that was that was an interesting change um, definitely at that time um, uh, I suppose you could say the uh, the protection of the environment was better in Canada so the air was cleaner uh, the water was uh, probably safer to drink under communism uh, they didn't much care for uh, environmental protection so that was better um, and I mean uh, a myriad of other things um, a lifestyle change yeah I mean it was it was it was an adjustment it was uh, the pop culture was different and yeah it was uh, I remember uh, not so much for me but I remember my parents were really um, amazed and at the same time a little bit scared of how uh, I guess of how vibrant it was or how open it was, I suppose uh, uh, that's how they felt about it. Um, what did your parents have to do to survive in their new country? How did they get jobs, a home, or even know where to live, especially since they didn't know how to speak English? That was from Martin Hernandez. Um, first of all, they had to try to learn English as fast as they could, uh, which, was, which was difficult. And they... Um, at that time, the Canadian government was uh, doing a system by which they would help out um, uh, immigrants uh, by giving them a, a, a sort of a halfway house to live in while they looked for, for their own place. And fairly quickly, um, we got to know uh, a bunch of people who had already, uh, who had already come from, uh, from Czechoslovakia who had uh, immigrated. And so they sort of showed us around. In fact, uh, most of my parents' friends, even to this day, are uh, uh, Czechs and Slovaks who left the country. So, yeah, uh, as we started to meet people, we started to ask questions. And, you know, we, we uh, uh, one of the key things I remember is that some people were saying that, you know, my dad should take any job he can get. And some other people were saying, no, you know, you, you're an engineer, you should, you should get a job um, uh, that's in your field, and that's what they did, and it turned out to be the, turned out to be the right decision, actually. So that was one of the, one of the things that had to be, that had to be solved or, or, or decided was, you know, um, were they going to take any job they could get just to start off, or were they going to aim for, uh, to be in their field? And it turns out that they, uh, that my dad, anyway, aimed at a job that was in his field, so that worked out well. Um, was it hard for you and your parents to learn English? Uh, I think if my parents were here, they'd say <laughs> they'd say that they're still uh, working on learning English. Um, it was hard. Yeah, I, I remember us having discussions, the three of us, about um, you know, uh, we were trying to figure out the English words for uh, for, for for things we already knew in Czech, and that was funny. And certainly, I only remember very a very short time where I couldn't really communicate with anybody because my English was wasn't good enough. But I was so young that I learned English, and I think my my parents say that it took me about three months, and I was I was done. You know, I was up to speed with everybody my age. Uh, for them, of course, it took a lot longer, and they're still, you know, they're they're still not completely. Uh, comfortable like native English speakers would be, uh, but you know they're getting there. <laughs> uh, did you have trouble in school in the first years when you were still learning English? That's from uh, sorry. That previous question was it hard for you and your parents to learn English? That was from Aileen Avendado, and this one is from uh, Cesar Perez. Did you have trouble in school in the first years when you were still learning English? Yeah, like I said, it took about three months, and then that was about. Uh, that was about all the trouble I had with uh, with English um, and of course it was different from my parents because it took them longer um, 
This one is from Miguel Garcia. How was your appreciation of your new freedoms in Canada? What new freedoms made the biggest difference to you? Um, I guess I didn't really uh, feel that uh, maybe as much as my parents did. I remember though um, my my dad struggling with uh, the idea of seeing political protesters. Uh, you know, um, I don't know what the what the protest was about, but it was against some policy or, or some such thing. And and my dad told me later he was thinking. Why are they complaining? They have it so good. Canada's so so fantastic. Why are they complaining? And then he realized that it's because they constantly want better that Canada is 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 the great place to live that it is because people constantly want to improve and they're always asking for um, uh, how do I put it? I guess a better system or a uh, a more um, a more I don't want to say a more free, but something like that, where they're essentially always trying to improve their country. So that was an adjustment I know that that uh, that my my father had to make because, of course, in Czechoslovakia there's no such thing. You're not you're not allowed to protest the government. You're not allowed to criticize um, their procedures or their laws or the rules. You're not allowed to do that. So that was a big that was a big adjustment. This one this one is from. Juan Barcenas. What was it like when your family was finally able to go back to Czechoslovakia? Which family members were you able to see? Well, when we went back, um, it was it was it was great. It, it was it was great to be able to go back. It was kind of like I tried to make an analogy to how it actually felt. I guess. Um, I guess imagine, I suppose it was kind of like if you had this great big room in your house that you used to remember going into, but it was closed to you for a long time, and then finally you were able to go back in. Uh, I suppose it was something like that. Um, it was interesting to see how different uh, Czechoslovakia was from Canada, and it was also interesting because I've been back more than once, I think I've been back four times now, it got progressively better every time I went back, uh, which is interesting. So the first time, obviously still uh, quite polluted, not terribly well organized. The um, the current the the value of the currency was quite low, uh, and then and then the next time it was a little better and a little better and a little better. And now when you go back, it's a it's you know uh, a darn near fully uh, westernized uh, European country. Um, which family members were you able to see? Uh, all of them except my grandmother on my dad's side. Uh, she died in, I think it was 86, and the communism fell in 89, so um, I wasn't able to see her. Uh, they did come, uh, during that time, they, they did come for visits uh, to Canada, not that many. And they also were able to leave because because uh, uh, the government treats retirees a little different because they know they're they're not that likely to defect, and that they're not as economically important, quote unquote. Um, so they treat them a little differently. So they're a little looser with the rules about traveling and so on. So uh, we were able to meet them uh, sometimes in Canada and also sometimes in Germany. So. Yeah, really. Apart from my from my dad's mom, I saw everybody, uh, which was really nice. Uh, and uh, since then, both my grandfathers have died, um, but it was good to it was really good to be able to to be able to see them and to you know to be able to uh, spend some time with them. Um, this one is from Julian Franquez. Do you? Or your parents have any happy memories of your defection? Th there were some fun times. Um, I remember uh, because we were with my uncle and uh, my cousin. My cousin and I are almost exactly the same age, and we sort of, you know, we, we had some fun hanging out together during that time. And um, and I remember one one time specifically. We were in some, where were we? We were in some hotel pool, I guess, or something like that, and just kind of goofing around. And then we went over to talk to some people, and they were Germans. 
and they spoke to us in German and we went back to our parents and said those people don't know how to talk <laughs> so that was pretty funny um, yeah there were some there were some fun parts I guess uh, obviously mostly it was pretty stressful but yeah there there were some times that were okay um, what were some of the laws your parents had to obey that convinced them they had to leave Czechoslovakia? Uh, that question doesn't have a person unless it's from Amanda Gutierrez. Um, well, obviously, any protest against the government was outlawed. Um, uh, private businesses were outlawed. Everything was owned by the government. Um, so really all the rules stem from that and you couldn't speak out against political leaders or against the, the justice system or, or, or any kind of thing like that so um, that and the 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 uh, sort of how do I put this the way that you had to respect the the Russian uh, government as well and and its history was quite oppressive um, and I think I covered a bit of that in the video. That was that was quite difficult. And essentially, um, it wasn't maybe so much the laws as it was the quality of life. When you when you keep people from saying what they want and doing what they want, it, it generally makes everyone uh, poorer and it makes life more difficult. And I think that my parents didn't want that uh, for me. So uh, that was one of the reasons that they that they decided to leave as well. Can you still speak your native language? Do you teach your son how to speak it? I can. I'm not great at it. Um, I've been back uh, obviously a few times and, and uh, some people say that my check is pretty good. <laughs> you know, it doesn't always feel like that to me. But um, I speak it. it. It's more difficult to teach uh, my son how to speak it because he's not immersed in it right it's it's very difficult because he's not he doesn't go to school with Czech kids and he doesn't get to practice very much so it's quite difficult to to get him to, to sort of teach him how to how to do it but um, I'd like to and I think you know at some point uh, when we when we travel some more we might um, we might uh, go to Czech Republic and, and spend some more time and maybe he can pick the language up um, how do you think your lives would have been different if you'd stayed in Czechoslovakia? Uh, that was from Ruben Cortez. Um, I think they would have been very different. Uh, excuse me, mostly, probably mostly from an economic standpoint, because, um, uh, you know, during communism wasn't a particularly great time. And then after the, 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 the one or two years after communism, uh, after the communist regime fell, lots of lots of upheaval right lots of economic problems um, companies closing down uh, it didn't just you know move from from a planned economy to a uh, to a free economy overnight and there was a lot of adjustments to be made so lots of people you know lost time and lost uh, lost money and 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 you know didn't didn't how do I put this didn't make the most of maybe what they could have done if they were if they were out of Czechoslovakia though I think um, I think we probably would have been okay but who knows what we would have had to sacrifice to to keep living there. Um, and I know certainly that that uh, when I went back lots of people uh, said you know <laughs> look how look how tall this guy is it must be all that Canadian food um, so I I guess maybe even physically we would have been different. Certainly, the um, the 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 system of medicine in Canada is 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 better and has been for for quite some time. Uh, and yeah, I mean, I guess healthcare is is just one of the ways that that uh, that you benefit when you when you live in a freer country. Um, have your parents talked about how hard it was to make the decision to leave their parents and families behind? Uh, what specifically made them believe it was worth it? Virginia Lopez. Um, they have talked about it, and they, they, they often say that if they were a little older, they probably wouldn't have done it. That they had the sort of uh, bravery, and I guess 
uh, I don't know, uh, the ability to make these sorts of uh, quick, tough decisions because they were so young, maybe they didn't really know what, what was in store for them. Uh, they've told me that before. And, yeah, I think... Uh, I think the decision to leave families behind is, is is a decision out of practicality. You can't, you couldn't bring everybody with you, uh, particularly my my grandparents and you know uh, some older people would have had a would have had a tougher time adjusting because you know they wouldn't have had their circle of friends anymore. Learning a new language is much more difficult uh, the older you get. So, um, and really, the the more people you discuss it with the less likely it is to succeed because someone may, you know, uh, make a mistake and tell the police or, or, or some such thing. So, um, yeah, there was, there was, there was a lot of, there was a lot of talk about, you know, uh, was it the right decision? And I think they thought it was worth it because they, because they wanted to make the most of their lives. They wanted to, and, and for me as well, they wanted to be free to do what they wanted to do and, 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 to, and to live up to their potential, which is a question that's coming up here. Um, have you ever felt discriminated against in Canada because of where you came from or because you were still learning English? That was from Miriam Contreras. Um, I think in the first couple of months, I probably didn't uh, have a whole, lot of, a whole lot of friends at school. But once I learned English, that 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 uh, happened fairly quickly and I mean to be perfectly honest it's easier for me because I guess because I mean it's easier because I'm a white guy and you know it's harder for people who are not there's there's no there's no doubt about that when you look like um, you know you're from somewhere else it probably is more difficult to fit in and that's not a problem that I had. Once I learned English, um, uh, you couldn't really <laughs> tell the difference between me and and somebody from a from a, a long Canadian heritage. So, yeah, I, I suppose in that respect. But I know that um, my father at work had some had some uh, difficulties with um, sort of a glass ceiling, and, and Mr. Daglish will explain what that means. Uh, that Lots of people who were being promoted in his company were former um, uh, British Air Force uh, people, and you know the people who weren't of British heritage had a little, a little more trouble. And that's a long story, but yeah, there, there, there were some instances of, of, of some discrimination, but, but very few really on the whole. Um, how was your family treated by the Czech government after you defected? That was from Joey Cormier. Uh, well, the, my parents were tried in absentia, which means they had a trial, which they weren't there for, obviously, and the government sentenced my dad to 18 months in prison and my mom to 12, and, uh, they actually sentenced them as well with abduction of a minor, which was me, which is silly, but that's what they did. Uh, luckily, those sentences never had to be, never had to be carried out, and in fact, when the communist regime fell, the government essentially issued, I guess, apologies or retractions of those sentences. So, um, and yeah, my, my grandmother lost her job. Uh, she was fired from, uh, she had a job as a, um, a manager of a senior's home. She was a nurse, and so she had to take a job as a junior nurse, which was, uh, you know, below her qualifications. I know that um, they had, uh, my family had some property uh, which was taken away from them. Their apartment was taken away. Uh, there was a, uh, a sort of a, a, a vacation cottage which lots of people owned together that was, that was taken away from them by the government. So, yeah, uh, not particularly well, honestly. But on the whole, it could have been worse. And, and, and in lots of other communist countries, it was worse. Um, would you like to live in Czechoslovakia? Why did you and your parents stay in Canada instead of going home? That's from Brandon Martinez. Well, basically, one day, I, I think it would be fun 
uh, to live in Czechoslovakia for uh, for maybe part of the year or for uh, a short stretch, I think it would be great. Um, I think it's much easier to do that when you're bringing in Canadian money, uh, to be honest. It's more difficult to make a living in uh, Czechoslovakia than it is to bring you know money you've earned from the outside that's worth more that's obvious um, and the reason we stayed really was because first of all we'd you know we had uh, decided we were uh, Canadians and that was that and really uh, uh, still um, life probably has more opportunities and more more uh, freedom in Canada than it does in the Czech Republic maybe even still today. So that's why we decided to stay. What was the most difficult thing about living in Czechoslovakia? Well, that's a hard question. That's from Gabriela Sanchez. Um, that's a hard question to answer. Uh, I think if I had to answer it quickly, I would say quality of life. Everything from health care, uh, pollution, um, uh, intellectual freedom, physical freedom, freedom to travel, um, th those were all difficult things about living there. Uh, and so just generally your, your overall quality of life. Uh, how did you and your parents feel when they saw the news that Czechoslovakia would be free? That was from Mayra Sena. Um, it was great. It was, a, it was a really great day. We'd been waiting for that for a long time. Obviously we knew lots of people back there who would benefit from that and we were happy for them and yeah generally we were just we were just glad that the that the regime was over and that you know we could we could start building up connections again with with people who had lived there uh what were your first months and years in canada like that was from ignacio uh hiroga sorry if i got that wrong um they were a big adjustment. They were they were exciting. Um, they were a lot of work because you know my parents were learning English. They were finding jobs. They were you know uh, establishing themselves. Um, I didn't feel that as much maybe as uh, as they did, but of course I still felt you know I missed my family and 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 it was difficult to uh, it was difficult not to have not to have that support system around. So. You know, we all felt that, and that was that was difficult. But it was mostly quite exciting that you know we were in a place that uh, that would really allow us to to do what we wanted to do. Uh, did your family feel welcomed by the Canadian government and the Canadian people? Uh, I certainly felt like we were welcome. Uh, in fact, uh, we came at a time between, and uh, uh, Mr. Daglish will explain this a little more to you. We came at a time between the. Uh, to Trudeau um, administrations where there was a conservative government and they were really recruiting Canadians uh, who had some skills to offer uh, Canada and I think we were particularly welcome in that sense because my dad was an engineer and my mom had some uh, some work experience as well so um, yeah I, I, I think in general we felt welcome and certainly there wasn't there wasn't any kind of a any kind of a backlash against us that I could see, um, but that might be a good question to ask my parents. Um, was it hard for you and your parents to learn English? Yeah, it was hard. <laughs> um, how did it? That was from Brianna Bretado. Um, how did it feel putting this video together? Did you talk to your parents about it? That was from Perla Herrera. Yes, it, it, it was really good to put this video together, and it, it gave me an opportunity. I'd been wanting for a long time to, to have my parents write down the experience, because we talk about it a lot, but we hadn't really put it down on paper, uh, you know, for a, a more permanent record. So it was great to actually be able to get it down on paper. It's, it's, it's something that I've, that I've wanted to do for a long time, and this video gave me the... the sort of excuse to do that I guess which is which is great and I, I appreciate that um, how do you feel today about what happened to your family do you hate the people who took your home from you um, the problem with communism and with any uh, oppressive regime is that it mobilizes the worst qualities of people and so 
it's hard to say I hate them because they were uh, victims of that as well. Really, very few people um, loved that system and loved being having power over someone. Uh, most people just just tried to survive it, and I suppose they didn't really have much of a choice and 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 had to do their jobs as well. So I don't know if I hate them. Certainly, certainly. Um, I think it was a terrible, terrible choice to go down that road in the, in the, uh, after the, after the Second World War, and the people that supported it, I think, are, are, uh, you know, rotten folks. But I don't know if I can say that I hate them. Uh, why didn't your parents try to take your grandparents with them? That was from Louis. Uh, I'm gonna go with Mon, Monje. Uh, sorry about that, Louis. Um, it's it's much more difficult for older people to to travel and to make that kind of adjustment. Remember, we were we had been on the road for uh, just over three months, and that's fine if you're young and resilient. But as you get older, uh, that becomes much more difficult, and the stress would have been probably much more difficult on my uh, grandparents. And of course, you know they had already built their life in uh, Czechoslovakia, and they didn't necessarily want to abandon it maybe uh, as much as we did so you know there are some some differences there which is which is why they they, they couldn't come also if you take that many uh, if you attempt to take that many family members out of the country it becomes very suspicious so the chances of succeeding are, are a little lower um how long did it take to plan your defection did they get help or advice from anyone that was from brandon or osco um I don't know how long it took. Actually, that's a that's a good question. I know that the, the only people who were really planning it were my father and my uncle. They didn't talk to anyone else except shortly before they left. They spoke to one friend and told him what was going on. Um, in fact, when they were planning it, they had to, as they were talking in the apartment, they had to have the radio on and the water running so the neighbors couldn't hear what they were saying. It's a very, very cloak and dagger kind of thing. Um, I suppose they may have gotten some help uh, from people who had already defected, maybe by way of a letter. But you know what? I, I really don't know, and that's that's a good question to to follow up with with my family. Um, how did it feel to have escaped when so many others, including some members of your own family, couldn't? Obviously, we uh, we knew we were quite lucky to have left successfully with. Uh, you know, fairly minimal damage. Uh, like I said, no one tried to take advantage of us. Um, we were never really put in any uh, physical danger, right? We were never at the point of a gun or anything like that, which lots of people were. So um, I think we felt relieved. Um, and, you know, obviously that we had succeeded. We felt lucky. That was from Ashley Gorham. <clears throat> Um, have you ever wished you could have lived in a Czechoslovakia without communism, or are you happy with the way your life turned out? That's from Dylan Pimentel. Um, both of those things, actually. I am happy with the way my life turned out. Um, but also, I think it would have been... A, a, a free Czechoslovakia would have been would have been a great place to, to grow up as well. So I think both, if, if I can answer it that way. Um, now that you have a family of your own, have you thought about what choices you would have made or what you would have done differently if you were in your parents' place? That was from Cassandra Castillo. Um, I've thought about it. I, I still find it amazing that my, that my parents uh, were able to, to do what they did and that they were willing uh, to do that. Um, I don't think you can really answer that question until you're there yourself and until you realize what your life is going to be like if you stay and you compare it to what it's going to be like if you leave. Uh, so I think about it, but I don't really know. Um, do you feel like you have made the most of the freedom your parents sacrificed to give you? Do you think your parents are proud of you? Um, I think they are proud of me. Um, hard to say, do I feel like I've made the most of it? Probably not, because the, 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 the possibilities for success here are, are, are limitless, right? It's kind of like saying, you know, have you lived up to your potential? Well, no, because your potential is is huge. But one thing I can say is that I'm glad and 
and I think this is important for everyone, uh, particularly people who come from uh, who come from a, a regime like that, is to never take your freedom for granted. And I don't. Um, and to the degree that I can, I'm always uh, advocating for, you know, I'm advocating against uh, government control and um, generally for a free society. Uh, that has become a less and less popular opinion these days, unfortunately. And uh, I think the the tendency towards uh, towards a socialist or communist uh, society is coming back a little bit, and that's that's a bit scary. But you know, I think uh, I d I do what I can to uh, uh, to make sure that uh, Canada remains a free place. Um, do you tell your family story often? Uh, I tell it whenever someone talks about how great uh, communism is in Cuba or in uh, some other China or some such thing. Yeah, I, I talk about it a fair bit because I think it's it's important. Um, I don't go around, you know, I don't introduce myself uh, and then start in on the story immediately. But when the subject comes up, yeah, I, I do because I think it's important uh, for people because most people just, you know, were born here and grew up here and don't don't understand how um, how important it is that their that their country is free. How does all this make you feel about your parents? That was from sorry. That previous question was from Fernanda Zendejas. And how does all of this make you feel about your parents? Is from Christopher Castro. Um, I'm amazed that my parents were able to do what they did, and I'm uh, I have a lot of respect for them. Uh, that they took so much on uh, in order to make their lives better. I think that's quite amazing. Um, I think now, guys, I'm going to have to take a little break uh, because I'm going to be late for work unless I leave. So we will continue this uh, some other time. Um, so I'll make an, a part two of this video with the rest of the questions, and we will continue on. Okay? Thanks a lot. Bye. Hello guys, I'm back um, for part two of our Q and A about uh, about the uh, about the video. <clears throat> so the next question: um, What was the hardest thing about this experience for your parents? Do they have trouble talking about it? That was from Alejandro Caracosa. Um, I think the hardest thing for my parents probably uh, was I mean they had to deal with a lot, obviously, but. I think the the thing that was the most difficult was probably that they had to leave so much behind. They had to leave their families behind, their friends. You know, they had a circle of friends, and uh, not only is that nice because you know socially you get to hang out with people you know, but also you know from a career perspective, it's much easier to move around knowing people than it is to come to a place where it's brand new and you don't know anybody. So I think that was probably the hardest thing was was leaving behind all the people that they knew. Uh, do they have trouble talking about it? They don't have trouble. Um, sometimes they're even a little bit sheepish about it. Like they're a little shy to talk about it because they think it makes them sound like they're bragging or that they're, that they're uh, you know, sort of puffing themselves up, um, which, you know, I don't think that's true, but uh, uh, they do a little bit. So, but, but when it comes time to talk about it, they're not, they're not upset by it. Uh, and certainly if someone wants to know about it, they're, they're, they're glad to share. Um, do you know any other people who defected? Are their stories more or less the same as yours? That was from Rachel Osorio. Um, yeah, we, we know a bunch of other people who defected. Uh, most people, uh, well, first of all, lots of my parents' friends are um, uh, Czechs as well who, who defected. And most Czechs who did, who left uh, um, the uh, who left Czechoslovakia left just after the 1968 uh, Soviet invasion. Um, but uh, excuse me. But um, are their stories more or less the same as yours? Sort of. Yeah. Most of my parents' uh, friends came here without children. 
in fact, some of them uh, came here and met when they were in Canada. Um, but the large majority, I can only think of one right now of my parents' sort of circle of friends that I know who had a child who was born in Czechoslovakia when they came here. So in that way, it's not really the same as most of my, uh, most of my parents' friends anyway who came here um, just as, a, as, as a, either single or as a couple. Um, what happened to your grandparents after you defected? Are they still alive? That's from Jorge uh, Tzlila or Klila. Sorry about that. Um, my grandparents, you know, lived lived their lives. They were they were persecuted a bit by by the government. Uh, they had some things taken away. I mentioned that my grandmother on my mother's side lost her job. Um, my grandparents on my father's side were already well into retirement, so there wasn't really much that that the government could do uh, could do to them. Um, we did have, like I mentioned, we had a few things taken away. Um, my my only living uh, grandparent is my mom's mom. Um, my grandfathers died uh, actually within a year of each other in '97 or '98. And my dad's mom uh, died, I think, in 80... I, I may have mentioned this before, but I think in around uh, 86 or 87. Um, what was the worst experience your family had once they came to Canada? Um, I can't remember... Sorry, that question was from Sammy Lopez. I can't remember one particular experience that I, that I could say was the worst... Uh, I don't remember a lot of negative experiences. I just know that the the adjustment uh, to living here at, at first, at least, was a bit tough. Um, I know that uh, you know in a in a in a communist country, there's very little uh, there's very little crime and there's very little um, how do I put it uh, unethical business doing done uh, being done because. The punishments for it are are uh, obviously uh, out of proportion. So you know when you when you come to a free place, you know you're you're going to meet people. Sometimes who will try to rip you off, and uh, that's one of the downsides uh, of being in a in a in a country where people are free. And that happened to us a couple of times, but but not on any major scale. Uh, just minor, uh, you know, uh, a mechanic told us some lies or some such thing, uh, but. It wasn't, it wasn't, I don't really remember uh, a great deal of, of um, experiences that were so bad that one of them would stand out as being, as being the worst. I guess in that way, I don't know if we were lucky or if we maybe took the right attitude or um, I'm not really sure. But uh, yeah, we didn't really have anything that was, that was really that bad an experience. How old were you when you, f uh, how old were you the first time you were able to go back to Czechoslovakia? Did you meet family members your own age, and how had their lives been different from yours? I was, let's see, I think I was, it was 1991, so I would have been 15? No. Yes. 15. Uh, and... It was, it was quite an experience, I have to say. Uh, I was glad to go back, and I did meet family members uh, around my own age. Um, and yeah, I mean, at, at that time, they were still recovering from, uh, from the you know, rather uh, big economic downturn after, uh, after the communist government was defeated. So yeah, they were having some some difficulties and I suppose in that way uh, my life was different because I wasn't I wasn't a part of that I wasn't uh, I wasn't subject to that um, to that sort of painful adjustment that happened and I know that you know as a uh, just in general um, quality of life in Canada and, and uh, uh, you know the, the, the opportunities you can have and and even just your day-to-day -day activities I guess are different, and you live in a different culture. I was um, I was a big fan actually, and I uh, uh, and I brought some baseball equipment the first time I came back to Czech Republic. And uh, you know I'm a big fan of baseball, and that doesn't really exist uh, very much in Europe. 
Okay. So that was sort of interesting. To uh, I did actually find a team um, where my grandmother lives who practiced out in the soccer field, and, and, and we practiced a bit together. And, you know, in that way it was very different because I was fairly good at it, and those guys were just, just starting to learn the game. So um, that was a neat experience to sort of be able to go back and, um, I guess, in a way, kind of coach some of those guys uh, because I knew the language and I could I could play ball. So that was that was a neat example of how of how certainly I th that wouldn't have been the case if I'd grown up in Czechoslovakia. So that was interesting. What happened to the family you left behind after you defected? Were any of them punished because you escaped? That was from Sabina um, Zubrian. Uh, yeah, some of them were. I, I mentioned we had some stuff taken away, and that my grandmother was um, had her. Uh, she was fired from her job. Um, th those kinds of things actually, Czechoslovakia uh, was on the easier side, I guess, of 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 some other communist countries, where where the punishments for uh, families uh, left behind, say in Romania or in even in Poland, certainly in Russia were much more strict uh, and uh, much uh, much more unfair, obviously. Um, so in that sense, I guess, uh, we were a little bit lucky as well. Um, do you think your life would have been better if your family had gone anywhere besides Canada? How was the life your uncle's family had in Germany different from yours? That was from Maria Gill. Um, it's hard to say. Uh, how your life turns out is partially based on on luck and I think we've been quite lucky uh, in Canada with the people we've uh, met and uh, you know the, the the experiences we've had I sometimes think that um, that had we been had we gone to the United States I don't know if if we would have been more intimidated by it and therefore not as successful or if perhaps um, because the United States is even more committed to uh, personal freedoms uh, maybe than Canada is uh, if our lives would have been uh, so much better. I, I don't really know. It's, it's, it, it's hard to say, obviously. I am, uh, and recent events have, have, um, have even reinforced this feeling in me. I am glad we didn't stay in Europe. And my parents speak about that a fair bit, and and they're also uh, quite happy that we came to North America because the the lifestyle here and and I think the approach to society sometimes seems a bit crass maybe or 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 wasteful but on the other hand it's also um it seems to serve the people better I think and um certainly living here has has a great many benefits over living in Europe, and that's not to say living in Europe is a horrible experience or anything like that, but, uh, you know, sometimes it's nice to have a big, big ocean between you and some people maybe you don't want to hang out with. So, yeah, I think, uh, in the end, I think Canada was a good choice, but yeah, it probably would have been different. How was uh, my uncle's life different? They were able to visit uh, relatives more in, in, in Czech Republic after communism fell, and you know, obviously they were closer to um, the same kind of society in terms of, you know, European society is uh, uh, German and, and Czech are, are much closer than Czech and uh, Canadian or American. Um, I don't know if they... They're certainly doing just fine in Germany. So um, to say they made the wrong decision would be would be untrue. They're 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 doing just fine, but uh, yeah, uh, uh, their life is different. Uh, and to be perfectly honest with you, I'd rather be here than there. So there you have it. Um, what did your parents miss most about Czechoslovakia? Do you remember anything about your life there? Um, like I said, I think my parents missed missed the uh, the people they knew the most. Um, I remember some things about about life there. Yeah, I remember. Um, uh, some of the... I remember my dad's old car, which I used to sit behind the wheel of quite a bit. And I remember... Um, I just remember everything being... I've said this, I guess, in this video too. I just remember everything being smaller and kind of 
how do I put this? Almost more hands-on because because the you know the sidewalks are closer to the road and and, and everything's just kind of uh, packed in a little a little tighter. Um, I remember my my family obviously, uh, my grandparents, and uh, I was three when I left, so you know there aren't uh, that many strong memories. But yeah, I I, I remember uh, I remember some of. Uh, some of the, the happier elements of living there, definitely. Um, why did Czechoslovakia split in two countries after communism? Well, um, I don't have a particularly deep understanding of um, the history of Czechs and Slovaks, but they've always been they've always been uh, two very similar but 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 definitely distinct cultures, and um, communism. Uh, like it was in, in, in Yugoslavia. Yugoslavia is made up of, of uh, several different uh, f fairly distinct people. And just like them, you know, the, the uh, communism really suppressed those distinctions because um, you, couldn't, you couldn't protest politically uh, uh, under a communist government, so you couldn't, uh, you know, uh, a people couldn't, couldn't determine their own, the fate of their own country and how they wanted to be governed and so on. So when communism fell, that started to happen, and um, you know, Slovaks and Czechs decided that they were going to be that they were going to be two different countries, and it was quite peaceful, uh, which is which is something to be proud of, and continues to be. And uh, both societies uh, are doing, I suppose, fairly well. I don't hear any any news of of uh, uh, suffering or or any kind of calamity. So. Uh, so they seem to be doing just fine. Um, do you and your parents feel more Czech or more Canadian? How do you see your identity? Uh, sorry, that previous question, uh, why did Czechoslovakia split in two, was from Enrique Ledesma. And that, uh, and do you, you and your parents feel more Czech or Canadian? How do you see your identity? Is from Anthony in Zunza. Um, we definitely see ourselves as Canadian first. Uh, and when the Canadian uh, hockey team plays the Czech hockey team, we cheer for Canada. <laughs> uh, but certainly a, a big part of our identity is uh, is the Czech origin. Um, how do I see my identity? I guess I just see it as as not divided, but but um, made up of made up of more than one element, made up of two things. And I always first and foremost support, um, I always support uh, the Canadian culture and uh, Canadian interests always before before Czech ones. But definitely, you know, there's a there's a part of my there's a part of my background that's that's not Canadian and it's different. And I think you know it has it has some positive it has some positive effects uh, and almost no negative ones. So really, I suppose. Uh, it's part of my identity, but I don't see it as a conflict. Uh, do you feel, I think this is the last question, do you feel you have two different cultures at the same time? Is that ever difficult for you? Uh, yeah, I, I, I do feel I have, I have two cultures happening at the same time, and I think that's okay. Uh, they don't stand opposed to one another. Um, I don't think there's anything uh, about Canadian society that is, that is 180 degrees different from Czech society or, or, or Czech traditions. I think they're, they're a little bit, they're a little bit different, obviously. Um, and so in that, sorry, that, that question was from Saul, uh, Carrillo. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't, uh, I don't have really a, a, a difficulty with it. I think if there is a difficulty, it might be that I want to maintain, um, I want to maintain to the degree that I can and to the degree that is practical the my Czech culture and links to the Czech Republic not at the expense of being Canadian but just simply because because it's it's a nice um, it's a it's it's a nice variety uh, and I like I like uh, going to the Czech Republic and I like the people I've met there, and you know, I've—it's uh, it, something I want to maintain. So, I guess 
that's difficult because the because the travel is, gets kind of expensive and to find the time to to go over there and and and, and spend time with people and and you know um, and and maintain that part of my part of my culture is is can be a bit difficult so I guess if there's something difficult about it it's that it's getting over there is uh, is it takes a long time and it's kind of expensive um, okay so I think that's all the questions um, again guys thank you and uh, I hope you got something out of this uh, video and the answers to the questions and I really want to thank you for taking so much time in asking so many questions and in, and in crafting them really nicely and and these questions really are um, really are very good ones and uh, and I'm really glad you sent them over so uh, yeah thanks again and good luck with the rest of your school year bye